Hey, hey, this is Chuck from Metawani, and I'm talking to Rob DeLuca from UFO. Rob, how are you? How are you doing, Chuck? How's I'm good, man. Awesome. Glad to be here. Thanks. Uh, so, you guys just released uh, the Salentino Cuts, which is an album of covers. Yes. Uh, they're awesome covers. You get uh, like this great version of uh, River of Deceit from Mad Season. Which is quite a unique yeah. choice for us. Uh, there's an awesome cover. I mean, I love uh, Robin Trower, and you did Two Rolling Stone. Yeah. So good. Um, so what made you, you know, what got you guys into making a record of covers? I think it wasn't really anything deep. I think it was just an offer, and it seemed interesting to the band, yeah. to Phil, and, and we went for it, and it turned out really well. Yeah, so, I think it's awesome. It was a lot of fun not having to, you know, it's a different mindset than writing yeah. a record. Yeah. You know, so it was, it was a blast. Awesome. So I really like it. Cool. So, um, what, for you personally, what was uh, some of the your favorite cuts that made it on the album? Um, I like I like the John Cougar song. I like uh, which was uh, Paper and Fire. I yep. like uh, the Robin Trower song to yeah. Stone, one of my faves since I was a kid. Um, let's see what else this really stand out to me. Um, Rock Candy's pretty badass. Rock Candy, yeah. yeah. Montrose. So, I mean, I like them all. Yeah. You know? Yeah. They're all fun in different ways. Yeah. Uh, the first song was uh, um, uh, "Heart Full of Soul" by by the Yardbirds. Yep. And uh, you know, when it got mentioned, I was like, you know, it's like an oldies song, but you know, it's kind of yeah. cool. But it's it's really kind of punky, and you know, I it, I really think we did our own. Definitely did a spin on it. That I I love that one. Yeah, you guys especially. did a, a great way. Of, yeah, I mean. Each of the covers, you know, you've got your own flair to it. I don't know if we really said let's, you know, yeah. change it because we weren't. I don't think we were really trying to change too much, other than like we might double a chorus somewhere or something right. like that. But uh, we weren't saying like you know we have to yeah. change this to make it our own. We were, we just learned it and then that's the way we play. Yeah. So I think. It naturally evolved a little bit, you know, but not too much where it would alienate like the listener from knowing the song, you know. Right, right. So I think it turned out really well. So, so um, I mean, you guys have like a ton of experience and interest, you know, across the band. So I have to imagine that trying to pick just twelve covers that you guys all liked was was difficult. What what it's went into that time. selection process? A lot of discussion over <laughs> beers that were yeah. It's cool. Ripped up the next <laughs> on tour. Every day on tour, we'd have a list. And the next one, it would get ripped up. Yeah. But uh, I think you know when you're when you're doing when you're recording and and doing live stuff in general, a lot of things rely rely on the voice. You know, right. what, what suits the vocalist, and so that's and it's you know it's Phil's Phil's band for fifty years. You know, yeah. So obviously, Phil's going to make those decisions. Yeah. Um, but we all you know came up with ideas. Vinny came up with a lot of. It was, I think, uh, Rock Candy and Trower and probably Mountain. At least those three plus more, I'm sure, were Vinny's ideas. And uh, Andy, I remember he came up with Tom Petty song. Uh, oh, yeah. From his band Crawl Daddy. We did uh, Honey Bee. Yep. His solo band or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And I remember that was one of Andy's ideas. Um, I thought of the John Cooper song, which I'm not a huge John Cooper fan. Right. But I just thought it would be just a rock and Yeah. Thing. You know, yeah, it, it, it turned out better than I expected. Actually. Right. Yeah. It's a it's a good uh, unique you know thing yeah, to mix in there that too. That was the point. Where we were just like we you know we were, had gone through so many possibilities. We're right. just throwing them out. <laughs> point, you know? so, but it, it came out really. I mean, we we definitely have a lot of grit. You know, a lot yeah. of propulsion to our, our versions. You know, right. it's like a lot of energy. So. Awesome. So you guys are a little over halfway through the year, tour of the East Coast, Midwest. Um, how's it been going so far? Really great. Um, we get along with Saxon and Jared James Nichols band very well. Um, we did it the same three bill, the same uh, bill in the spring, I think in March 2017, and everyone got along so well musically and personally that we uh -huh. decided to do it again. Awesome. And, uh, it's no no egos, no attitudes. We share whatever we can. Yeah. Um, everyone's looking out for each other. It's a really good vibe. It's not usually like this, you know. Not like the 
not the bands are they're cutthroat, right? You know, right. But but it's usually doesn't go um, this far into the positive as as it, as it has on this tour. It's really great. That's so, awesome. Yeah, just nice, nice people. That's so. cool. So it's it's kind of uh, unique and extraordinary when you get like two really big, awesome, legendary bands to on the same stage together on a single tour. Um, so how did you end up hooking up with Saxon? I think that was due to our booking agent, Dan DeVita, at TKO Artists. He, huh. he w works with all three of these bands. So he put us with Saxon, and then he put Jared as the opener. Awesome. So it worked out great. That's, that's good, man. So you guys have, um, I mean, almost 50 years of music to pick from when you're going on a tour. 2019, it will be 50 years. Yeah, these guys. yeah that's awesome. So what is it like, I mean, what is the process for you guys to figure out what you're going to play, uh, put on the set list? You know, again, it's, it's what Phil feels comfortable with, you know, his, yeah. his voice, in my opinion, has gotten a lot better over the years, but it's also changed. Yep. And um, so, you know, some of that stuff he sung in his 20s, you know, some of that stuff he sung in his 30s. So I think it's just what, what he feels comfortable with that particular tour at that time, you know. Yeah. And also, he's trying to give little glimpses of all the different albums, and that's so yeah. Cool, there's, yeah, that's there's monumental. Of right? <laughs> so it's it's hard. Yeah, that's why, you know, we sometimes stick with the core songs off, you know, from the classic era, and then just intersperse different things, you know, mm -hmm. because those are at least yeah. You know the obvious ones that yeah. everyone wants, like Doctor Doctor and so, yeah. Lights Out, which is cool. Because yeah, those are the ones that get the biggest oh. reaction. Yeah, so. maybe maybe some Prince Kajuku. <laughs> we, we played Boogie for George once. In oh yeah, Germany. I mean like in modern in, era. Wow. Yeah, like about two or three years ago we, we did it. Awesome. Four four years ago at the most, maybe like three years ago. But. <laughs> Is this really UFO? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, what was I going to ask you? Oh, so you're coming up on your 10 years with the band next year, I believe, right? 10 years, right? April 7th or 10 years. Yeah. So do you, um, compared to where you, like how you felt when you first joined the band, um, do you still have that spark for playing out and doing the tours like you did then? Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> I mean... I feel I, I enjoy it more. Um, I was talking to someone a, a year ago, um, and I told him that every every year I feel even more comfortable. As strange as that sounds, like uh -huh. you know, you learn the material and you you play all the right notes, pretty much from the beginning. If, yeah. If you want to be asked right, back. Right. You know? Right. Right. But there's there really is more to it than that. And also, if you're always thinking about other things like performing or you know vocals and stuff. Yeah. You know, so there's, there's a process you really grow into it, you know, and um, I think those guys have all grown into it a long time ago, but I feel like for the first few years I was growing into it every tour a little more. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that was related to your question. I, it was, yeah. 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 So uh, it's still very interesting for me, it always is, you know. I mean, like, you know, you dream of playing rock and roll as your job or whatever you want right. to call it. Your, right, your, yeah, your career. Your purpose, your job, yeah. whatever, all those things combined, you know. You dream of that as a kid, so to do it, and, and I saw UFO as a kid, yeah. you know, so it wasn't just like a gig, it was a right. band I was totally into. Yeah. Um, uh, when I was in high school, I saw them. So, uh, you know, you dream about that, and it's it's pretty cool to be doing it, even when, you're you know, even when things go wrong or you're tired right. or whatever, and, and the illusion wears off. A little bit. It's yeah. still amazing. <laughs> awesome. So, um, some UF, UFO fans may know, and some may not, that you were uh, the bass player in Spread Eagle, mm -hmm. and um, you know th that was a great band in the '90s. Thank I mean, I think you guys were probably got screwed over a little bit because of the grunge era thing, and because yeah. you're as good as Skid Row, in my opinion. But um, so. Uh, and I, I recently saw that you guys had uh, reformed and actually did like the hair metal uh, heaven tour metal out there. In, in Hull, England. Uh -huh. We did Hard Rock Hell Sleaze in Sheffield, England. We did a couple other British shows. We went to Germany. Cool. So, so how was that? It was so much fun because 
that band's part of my DNA. Of, you know, yeah. That's the band I learned how to be in a band yeah. with. That's how I learned what to do, what not to do, and, and you know, we were just kids. Right. And uh, so we had never gone overseas, though. Um, you know, long story, the label is like, when you, when you break in America, then we'll send you overseas. Right. You know, we didn't break in America, you know. So. Um, so to finally go after all those years, <laughs> you know, like I'm overseas all the time. Yeah, you know, yeah. But my guys aren't. Yeah. So to finally go over was rewarding for me t to get the band over there. Yeah. It was especially rewarding to see these guys go over and how that much they enjoyed it. Yeah, know? that's awesome. So it was great. The audience reactions were fantastic. Better than we expected. Uh -huh. Much better than we expected. So it was a good experience. Cool. So you guys plan to do anything else, any yeah, recording or anything we're like that? Yeah, we're going to do a new record in 2018. And awesome. For real. Oh, so, that'll be cool. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be good too. We're going to, you don't wait 25 years to, yeah. to make a shitty record. <laughs> right. I mean, what's the point? Right, so. exactly. Awesome. So um, I just have one last question for you. It's kind of a silly question I like to ask folks. Uh, what's your favorite breakfast yeah, food? You can put in my my breakfast food. Well, my favorite breakfast food is eggs, because I could eat eggs twice a day, every day <laughs> of my life. Uh, it's a superfood, yeah. tastes great, um, high in protein, um, amazing with vegetables and cheese, Yeah. some pepper, some hot pepper. Hot sauce, maybe? Um, nah. <laughs> hot, I prefer hot, hot pepper. Hot pepper, all right. So yeah, I'm, I'm eggs. holding the flag for eggs. <laughs> Awesome. Well, Rob, I really appreciate you talking with thanks, us. Chuck. Appreciate you, you yeah. coming. Yeah. Thanks a lot, man. All right. Enjoy the show tonight. All right. Thanks. All right.